Make your life an ongoing process of being who you are at your deepest, most easeful levels of being. Everything other than this process is secondary. Your job, your children, your wife, your money, your artistic creations, your pleasures, they are all superficial and empty if they are not floating in the deep sea of your conscious loving. <laughs> That's a quote from The Way of the Superior Man by David Dita. Let's imagine that you are really stressed right now or really, really anxious. You feel like a 10 out of 10 level, your body shaking, you feel tightness in your body. And let's imagine that there's another version of you sitting next to you that's a 10 out of 10 level of happy. He's really joyful, really pleasure, he has a smile on his face. He's just happy to be here. What is different and what is similar between both of you? Obviously one of you is having a really good time and the other one probably wants to kill himself. We should probably check up on him. But you're both still the same person with the same personality. You're just experiencing different things. I read a book recently called The Power of Unwavering Focus by Dandapani and it had an amazing frame for this. He said to imagine that you're this ball of awareness and you move around to different rooms whenever you experience a different emotion. So if something makes you really, really angry, you're not angry but you're in the room of anger. If you're something makes you really, really happy or sad, you go to those rooms as your ball of awareness. That is what you really are, is awareness. Now, most people can't do this. They can't separate themselves as the observer, the awareness from the emotion they're experiencing. But this is where suffering and problems comes from. If someone feels anger, the emotion of anger, and they're unable to separate themselves from that emotion, they're more likely to go be violent, to go say something they're gonna regret to pick a fight with someone they're not going to be able to use some coping mechanism like going to the gym meditating journaling because they can't even identify that they're angry someone else might feel a lot of desires they really need women right now they really want that drug they really need to go party they feel that desire and then they're unable to control that emotion and it overcomes them and they end up being at the mercy of it so they'll go party they'll go take that drug they'll go have another hit this is why most people can't build discipline because they're in this cycle over and over again where they feel the emotion then they take the action they feel the emotion then they take the action the solution to this to have control of your emotions to build discipline to be who you actually are is to become your most easeful level of being this must be your number one priority. I mean, do you want to be weak? Do you want to be at the mercy of your emotions, your thoughts? Do you want to go on vacation and not really enjoy it? This is what I experienced is that I've traveled to a few countries when I didn't have this scale built up enough and I didn't enjoy them as much as I could have because I was thinking about things. I was in my feelings. I was just going through these thoughts about what I needed to do and I wasn't there in the moment. I wasn't at my most easeful level of being while I was traveling. Traveling, and I wasted that time. So how do we develop and practice the state of mind? We're gonna call it presence. There are three methods that will allow you to get to the state of mind as fast as possible. The first one is daily meditation. There are three techniques that will allow you to get present as fast as possible. The first one is meditating every single day. Most people overcomplicate meditation. They think you need to be cross-legged, you need some app, you need to be humming while you're doing it. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. All you have to do is sit down, set a timer, close your eyes, and focus on your breath going in and out. When you're doing this, though, and you're focusing on your breath, a thought will randomly pop up, or an image will pop up, or a desire, an emotion, something that is going to distract you from that thing where you're focusing on your breath. The moment that you notice that you're thinking about something or that you're feeling some emotion, you need to bring your attention back to your breath. And every time you do that, you will get better at meditating. You will get better at being present. That is what meditation really is, is that act of bringing it back to the breath. Start with five minutes and work it up to 20 minutes and you will see life in a completely different way. The second technique is to have a writing practice. As we go through life, we tend to have these random thoughts that we don't get the time to process as we're going about our day. We're usually doing too much or we don't have that time to just sit there and think. But when you write down all of your thoughts in the moment, you're able to just process through anything that is that you're thinking of. And you won't even know what you're thinking of most of the time. It's usually in the back of your head. But if you write, and you write past the first couple of minutes, you start writing for five minutes, ten minutes, you'll start getting thoughts down onto this paper or onto your iPhone, whatever, that you didn't even know you were thinking about. 
And then after this practice, you start to feel so much more free and present because that's not just bogging down your head. It's not creating these emotions and desires in the back of your head. You have it all down and processed. It's a very rational practice. The best way to start doing this is by using your phone's notes app. So usually when I'm on the toilet or when I'm in some random place, I would usually go on social media. I'd usually start scrolling on something. But what I started doing is that during those moments, I would open my phone's notes app and I just started writing down whatever comes to mind. And it was the most random like thoughts at first, just what I was thinking about, what I'm doing, what I was doing before, what I want to do after. But after you get past those first couple minutes of writing, you'll start writing some things with substance. Some things you didn't even know you were thinking about, but it makes a lot of sense and it has a lot of significance in your life. And when you start writing those down, you start freeing yourself from those thoughts. And it's really, really powerful. So start with your phone app and then move on to maybe having a laptop notion document organizer. If you like handwriting, then having a notebook. The final technique is daily gratitude. But most people get something wrong when they do this practice. Every single morning, I wake up and I write 3 to 10 points of gratitude. It could be as simple as my laptop, my phone, the books that I have. Or it could go as deep as my dog, my family, my friends, these specific experiences that I've shared with some friends recently. But the most important thing that people miss when they do this practice is you have to feel the positive emotion that you felt in that experience. You have to feel the positive emotion of love when you're thinking of your friends and your family. You have to really feel it as you're writing. So for example, I would write that I'm grateful for the warmth of the sun on my skin when I go outside, when I'm sitting on the beach. So when I'm writing that sentence, I'm literally writing it and I'm imagining in my mind the feeling of the warmth on my skin. I'm imagining the beach, how it smells, what it feels like. And when I do that, I can recreate that positive emotion in myself right now as I'm imagining it. This is the true power of this practice. And most people, they just write it down and they think that they're doing it. But if you don't do this visualizing part, if you don't really recreate that emotion, you're not actually going to change how you feel in the moment. And when you feel this positivity, you feel this joy, that's going to anchor you in the present moment even more. It's like a high-level meditation, a high-level visualization, if you can really bring in the positive emotion into the present moment. And I would explain how exactly that works, but it would take way too long, so just wait for a future video, just go subscribe. But the action step for this is to literally go and do 3 to 10 points of gratitude every single morning. The morning is the best place to do this because you can just bring it in for the rest of your day. Thanks for watching the video if you got any value from this hit the like and subscribe button so the algorithm keeps pushing my videos to you and watch this next video